Hello guys, Alex from Maximal Fire here in what is the uh, channel's first painting tutorial. In this video I'm going to be taking you through my step-by-step -step process for painting the blue for Legio Tempestus. It's pretty straightforward, all you need is an airbrush and a few paints and we will take you through the process step-by-step. So starting off with the paints, we've got Eschen Grey, Neutral Grey, Ghost Grey, Dead White, Calgar Blue, Contrast Medium, Talisar Blue, and some Burnt Umber oil paint. All of them available from either Citadel or uh, Vallejo and with the Winsor & Newton oil paint. We're going to start with a base of just Chaos Black Undercoat and we're going to fill our airbrush full of the Neutral Grey and we're going to start by applying some speckling kind of patterns um, all over the area that you want to paint. Now it's important that you keep some of the shadows so as you can see here I'm not going all the way up to the edges I'm just kind of building up a light faded speckly backdrop for what we're going to be painting and making sure that I keep the black towards the rims because that's where we're going to be wanting those darker sort of colours. Really focusing in towards the sort of centre of the panels. And when you've done that, what you can do is you can come back in with some uh, Ghost Grey. Uh, this is similar to um, Ulthuan Grey by Games Workshop. And uh, all I'm doing here is building up the levels, uh, building up the layers a little bit, just to bring that kind of mid-tone grey up a little bit lighter. And I'm just effectively just applying the odd spots with the airbrush here again, reinforcing that speckled look. When you're happy with uh, with that kind of mid-tone grey, it's time to go in with your highlights. So for this one I'm uh, using Dead White, again by Vallejo. Um, this is similar to White Scar by Games Workshop. And I'm taking care with the airbrush there to just kind of apply this sort of white colour in the centres of the, the spots that I've effectively been building up. This again just to add a final highlight which is going to be glazed over the top uh, with uh, some of the contrast paint which you will see in the next step. Strange kind of doing blue starting with grey colours but uh, it's all about applying the contrast over the top. So I've chosen to use uh, Talisar Blue uh, by Games Workshop, it's one of their contrast paints. It's a very intense colour so it's actually quite important that you kind of weaken the colour a little bit. Um, at least for this technique. It's also worth noting as well, you can do this with any other of the darker colours that um, Games Workshop do by um, on that contrast range, any of the reds, it'll work just as well. But what I'm doing is I'm just taking that Talisar Blue and I'm applying a couple of uh, brushes worth of the contrast medium. This just sort of lowers that intensity a little bit so we've got a little bit more control on um, or how intense the blue is going to be. So when you've got your paint ready, just very, very lightly apply this all over the panel. Um, it's very important to make sure that you're not flooding any areas and you're kind of going for that sort of atomized paint dusting, I guess um, you could call it, all over the model. And when you've got the sort of blue in the center, there's the color that you kind of want it to be. Uh, what I've done here is I've started focusing out on the, the outlines and the outer edges of the panel. And this just means that we can keep that more intense blue into the shadows, um, into the edges, while still keeping quite a nice light colour in the centre of the panel to kind of really show through that kind of speckling underneath and give the impression of the sort of mottled look um, that we're going for here. At this point I decided to go in and block out some of the metallics. For this one I'm using my go-to metallic paint range which is the Scale 75 Metal and Alchemy range. This is black metal and I'm just using this to block in the base metallics all over the pad. 
already you can see this is kind of almost battle ready and um, this would look good on a titan just as is now for the chipping i'm using some sponge out of a blister and uh, i'm going to use the sponge chipping technique and i'm going to use eshin gray by games workshop for this i'm just going to lightly take that sponge dip it into the eshin gray and then get rid of most of the excess paint on a on a piece of tissue by the sides of my palette just to kind of leave just a little bit left on it and then sponge in where i want there to be a few little scratches or chips don't go too mad but it's nice to kind of have a few of these over the panels Once I'm happy with my chips, then I'm going to be uh, going in and doing some line chipping. So this is to kind of like look like uh, it's been hit by a bullet or something. And for this, I'm using the same mesh and grey, just applying it with a, um, a brush instead. Now I'm going to highlight the chips. And for this, I'm using Calgar Blue. And I'm going to be applying this in a kind of like stippling motion, dotting little dots underneath the grey of the chips that I've already put in place. It's quite hard to see on this here, but I'm effectively applying this lighter color to the underneath and where I would see is the behind of the panel to kind of build up a highlight effect to also add to the impression that this is chipped paint. This is where the oils come into it. Like I say, we've already got like a battlefield ready look here, but I want to kind of take it to the next level. And you can stop at this point or you can continue with me um, if you want to. I'm just applying a burnt umber wash all over the panel. It seems a bit strange slapping all of this over your uh, nicely painted panel, uh, but it's really worth it. Just thinning it down with lots of thinners so it's almost like a, a shade consistency and then applying it all over. It's important to make sure that you let this um, dry before moving on to the next step. When the panel's dry, I'm just going to try and remove some of the pooling slightly. And for this, I've taken a flat brush and just applied a little bit of thinner to it and then removed most of the excess. And as you can see, I'm using this dragging down method to essentially get rid of some of the oils that's pooled in places that I don't want. But it also adds some very, very subtle weathering by adding a few streaks here and there. Very, very subtle. You don't have to go overboard. Just make sure that you're not using a wet brush when you do this. Let this dry thoroughly. And then before you go to the next step, make sure you apply a matte varnish all over. At this stage, I'm going to be doing some um, dotting of oils. I don't really think the technical term of this, but effectively you just apply little dots in the areas that you want there to be proper rust streaks. And I'm basically putting these this oil on where I've put the chips. So, and um, focusing really on the areas that I want there to be solid streaking going on. So that also includes parts of the trim where it would hang off the trim. So again, just getting my thinners, just wiping off the majority of the excess. I'm gonna use a dragging down method here to form the shape of the, the streak. And you can keep wiping this off just to make sure that you're not dragging excess oil elsewhere on the the panel but you can really go in and shape these as much as you want just keep going backwards and forth with some thinners until you've got the shape and the desired look that you want Just keep manipulating the paint. Um, you can use your brush to pull it into areas that you want it darker, but then ultimately it's done. There you have it. One battlefield ready Tempestus armor plate. 
really quick, really easy, great use of contrast as well. And it's ready to go on your model. Thank you very much for watching and um, I'll see you again next time.